A Chinese spacecraft has recently completed more than 270 days in orbit. One Australian company has been monitoring that test flight. Terry Van Haren from Leo Labs joins me now to discuss it. Terry, thank you very much for your time. This is a really interesting story. Explain to our viewers in, you know, in broad terms what we're talking about here. This Chinese space plane that's basically been in orbit for a year. Yeah, g'day, Kieran, and it's great to be back. Um, yeah, it's about eight months. The, uh, the second Chinese space plane's been in orbit doing a whole bunch of different orbital testing. And so it's the second flight of the spacecraft. The other one, um, as a couple of years ago, it was basically a takeoff, uh, four orbits of the Earth and a landing sequence again. But this um, second test has been uh, eight months. It's been quite complex. Uh, we've seen um, the spacecraft uh, uh, change orbits, so it's got a manoeuvring uh, capability in low Earth orbit. Um, in fact, it went up to 650 kilometres and stabilised, and then it deployed a sub-satellite, which is an unusual activity. We called it Object J. And then over three occurrences in the next few months, and this is between November and, uh, and early April, uh, it conduct, conducted an under of what we call uh, rendezvous and proximity operations on that spacecraft. Uh, and the last few, in fact, we also saw the sub-satellite being deployed again and now manoeuvring, um, which is also very unusual. Um, so what this is, is the, uh, the Chinese, uh, the PRC, developing a very uh, interesting space capability, a multi-role, um, multi-orbit capability. They're really trying to close the gap on the United States, and it's very much like the X, uh, Boeing X-37B program, which is a very important program to the United States government. Um, and, you know, the, the spacecraft landed last Monday. We, we tracked it all the way through all these events, so we uh, were characterising all yeah. its uh, orbital characteristics, what it was doing, how it was manoeuvring, and its real, you know, its true capability. And we were impressed. It, it's a very uh, mature uh, orbital capability. It sounds, it certainly sounds like a, 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 quite an expanded uh, capability from the, the Chinese. What are the implications of that? Well, um, firstly, everything's dual use in space. I think I've said that bef before. So you can have civil and commercial uses of these types of capabilities. Uh, this is a reusable spacecraft, so it can go into orbit, it can do missions and then return, uh, bringing payloads back with it, which is an important uh, fact. Um, it can obviously do a bunch of uh, commercial and civil type uh, programs, but there's also the, the military side of these um, programs. And, and ha having a, a, a spacecraft now that can take a payload into space, which is actually covert. We don't know what the payload is. Um, operate in um, low Earth orbit at, at different altitudes and manoeuvre around that environment. Opens up a whole bunch of capabilities and, and possibilities, if you like, for the use of uh, such a spacecraft. Um, I think it's important to, to note that this test looked very successful. Uh, everything they did uh, worked. Um, they were able to manoeuvre the spacecraft, reference another spacecraft, capture that spacecraft and these sort of things. So we should expect now the, uh, the PRC and, uh, you know, the driver being the CCP to actually scale production of these uh, spacecraft and maybe we'll see even more and more of this activity in the future. Well, obviously, you and, and Leo Labs, your organisation, has been able to, to monitor the Chinese operations. Is Australia's and, and our allies, is our capability matching what the PRC is doing? Well, um, I think really the big strategic competition here is between you know, the US programs that are well established and uh, they've got fantastic capabilities and what's happening in China and that's China closing the gap very quickly now. Um, I mean this program didn't exist five years ago and now they've got a, a very successful test flight um, of a system now that they can take into a whole bunch of different uses. Um, we're also seeing different, you know, diff testing going on from other spacecraft in low Earth orbit and up into the higher orbit. So it's not one thing, it's many, and um, the gap has been closed. Uh, that puts the, uh, the changes the equation, the strategic uh, power equation, if you like, of, of the orbital environment. It also brings in manoeuvring spacecraft um, in routine operations in these areas, which means you, it, we, it's actually harder and harder to track them. Uh, it's actually, it actually takes more effort. We're lucky that we've been uh, deploying radars all around the world. Um, one in New Zealand there has been operational for years, but the one we just uh, brought online in Western Australia really complements uh, our global picture. And we're getting a much higher update right now and able to keep up with these changes, these manoeuvres, and try and characterise 
what's occurring, both for the mm. safety side of okay. space and the security side. And Terry, as a, a former commander in the Air Force yourself, a former fighter pilot, let me get your reaction to this news out of Ukraine. Ukraine claiming to have shot down three, uh, no, I should say six hypersonic missiles from Russia. If that's happened, how significant is that for Ukraine's air defences? Well, that's a, that's a fantastic result. And I believe the Patriot system has been uh, heavily involved in, uh, in that uh, air defence. And it shows you how advanced and capable that system is. Um, it also, I mean, some of the physics here, um, the hypersonic uh, weapons that Russia's been shooting there, uh, Mach 5 to 10 plus at the high altitude. But when they do come down, they do have to slow down. The atmosphere starts to interact. And I believe in some of these cases, they were actually shooting at the Patriot systems. And quite, you know, simple physics as a fighter pilot, if you want to you hit a bullet, you've got, you've got to shoot a bullet straight at it, basically. Um, so the geometry is right, and that's probably my main point of the, the uh, hypersonic uh, weapons yeah. were focused on the Patriot. It's in a, it was in a good position to take the shot, and it, it looks fantastic that they've, um, they've been able to be successful in defending themselves.